resist that urge for self-talk, for making yourself feel small, because what happens is that manipulative behavior can be internalized, which then drives your self-esteem lower, which increases the probability that you are going to accept it more easily. Don't accept it. Resist it. You deserve better. Build that self-esteem. Have you ever felt manipulated in a relationship? I mean, we all have, right? We've all had that scenario. Well, in this video, we're going to talk about how to combat that manipulation, and we're going to talk about managing this issue and problem and how you can avoid it and deal with it effectively. So let's get into it. Here we go. Most often, a lot of manipulation attempts in relationships tend to be based on trying to deal with relationship issues in a very indirect and punitive manner. A lot of times people engage in these behaviors because often they're questioning their own self-esteem, their own value in the relationship. They also feel like by putting up this false exterior that then by doing manipulative tactics, they're able to get their needs met. But the problem is, is that it's probably worked in like other relationships or maybe in some ways it's worked in yours. But the important thing to consider is in the long run, it doesn't. It's very, very self-destructive. And what it does is not only does it tear up the relationship and increase the probability of relationship failure, but it also attacks the self-esteem of the individual who's engaging in the behavior. But most of all, your self-esteem, your concept of self, because I think that these tactics wear away at us and oftentimes, depending on the skill level of the manipulator, we end up seeing it after the fact, right? It's that Monday morning quarterback. It's that hindsight is 2020, realizing that, what? Wait, how did I get into this? What is going on? Well, we're gonna talk about this and we're gonna get into some concrete strategies that you can use. And first and foremost is you've gotta recognize what those manipulative behaviors are. People give themselves away all the time. And I think it's important that we realize that people tell us what they do to other people. And that is often an indicator as to what they're gonna to do to us. So if you have people in your life, could be, um, relationship, could be a romantic relationship, could be a familial relationship, could be a working relationship, whatever it is. But if they're telling you about how they're manipulating others, taking advantage of others, you got to be aware of that these are things this person could and may have and very well may do to you in the future. So you have to be aware of these things. Now, the things I really want you to focus on and look at, does this person engage in guilt tripping? And guilt tripping, we all know what that is, right? I'm gonna make you feel guilty, so you do what I want you to do. And how deep and intense are they amping up that guilt? I think that um, we see this a lot in narcissistic parents. I think we see this a lot in narcissistic partners, but it's not just narcissists who engage in this. I think that any personality type can certainly engage in this. I think, again, as I mentioned, it goes back to that self-esteem and those self-esteem issues. And the other, you know, real common one is gaslighting. And I know gaslighting is a big buzzword, you know, at the moment, but it's important to be aware that gaslighting is that they're convincing you of something that they believe to be true, but you don't. But yet, because they tell you that it's true, you start to believe it's true because otherwise, why would they say it if it wasn't true? So it must be true, even though in your heart, you know, it's false. And that becomes a confusion. And if that explanation was confusing, rewind it, check it out. But that's what gaslighting is. The idea is to spin you around, right? If I can do that, right? Remember when we were kids, people would kind of spin us around, spin us around, spin us around. We try to walk, you know, and you couldn't, right? Because you were kind of like dizzy and things like that. That is the verbal equivalent of what gaslighting is. If they're telling you something and you're like, well, is this true? Of course it's true. I wouldn't tell you if it wasn't true course it is. But the reality and the facts say something else. So you believe what they're saying because this person is saying it. And you see it a lot in politics. You see it a lot in very powerful people that are trying to convince other individuals and manipulate those individuals into believing something where there's no real basis of fact. Instead, it's the basis because I said so. It's like, uh, 
Because I said so is a bad parenting strategy, it's a bad partner strategy, it's a bad coworker strategy, and it's manipulative. It's mean that basically what they're saying is, well, I can't really justify it, just do it because I said so. That's really not a winner. That's not a good one. Another one is playing the victim. And what you'll see in that we compare this with the guilt is that playing the victim is that they are so hurt and broken and I'm not able to do this. So you have to do it. But then when they ask you to do it, you're like, yeah, but this is going to have a real negative consequence. Or this is something that's terrible. I don't want to do this. And instead they're like, oh, but I can't do it. I've been hurt too much or I'll lose too much and all this. Basically what they're saying is I don't care how much you lose. I care that I might lose and we're not going to have that. So that's that play the victim. That's a big one. And then, of course, it can just be outright coercion and threats. And it's those threats. If you don't do this, I'm going to do this to you. But sometimes what happens is, is that we might play this manipulative tactic on ourselves. And it, and it comes out and it manifests as a fear of coercion and threats of what someone else may do even though they haven't done it or because they haven't done it and we don't have any historical information to validate that they would actually do it, meaning that they weren't violent in the past, meaning that they may not care as much as we thought they did. And I think in those situations, we're going to talk about how to deal with those things so that you're not stuck in it where you're using manipulative tactics against yourself too, because that happens as well. So we got to be aware, not only from others, can be with ourselves. And when we coerce and threaten ourselves, we think that, oh, well, we're, we're being protective. But a lot of times what we're doing is we're talking ourselves into a state of fear. And that state of fear really distorts how we see ourselves, others, and the world around us. So we don't want to operate from fear. We want to operate from authenticity. And that authenticity, again, it's about how we see ourselves, but it's also about how we see the people around us. And remember, if they're manipulative with others, they're going to be manipulative with you too. So how do we deal with it? Well, first and foremost, and this is going to, you probably never heard this before, right? That's sarcasm. And, but it's setting boundaries, right? You've got to have clear boundaries. You have to know what your boundaries are. And you can't develop boundaries just based on each and every different relationship. You have to take time and decide what you'll tolerate and what you won't. And there are certain things. For example, we, and we can go to extremes. Those are always the easiest one, right? Would you tolerate you're in a coffee shop and you and this person, right? You're not getting along. You're starting to argue and they throw their hot coffee at you. Are you going to tolerate that? Most people uh, are going to say no. I hope everyone says no. But there are people who are going to be like, well, I shouldn't have done this, this, this. And then you start making excuses for, for that inappropriate behavior. But that is that a boundary for you? Now, that, that is for you to decide. For me, I mean, if you're going to throw hot coffee, I mean, it's, that's probably going to be it. You know, we're going to end kind of that relationship right there. But also looking at someone's behavior, what will you tolerate and learning from that. And that helps us set up what our boundaries are. Start at the top. Start at coffee. How about if somebody spit on you? How about if somebody kicked you? How about if somebody smashed your windows in? Are these people you would continue a relationship with? How about at work if whenever you speak up, that person makes fun of you or makes a joke out of what you said. Are you going to tolerate that? Well, those are boundaries. That's how we establish and identify our boundaries and relate it back to your values, your needs, your limits, and how much you'll tolerate and what you won't. And that's really important to understand and become comfortable with asserting your boundaries. And a lot of times I think a lot of us try to manage our boundaries in a very passive manner, which is that we feel like, oh, well, you know what? I'm just going to fall back a little bit. I'm not going to say anything. And eventually that person will go away. All those people don't go away. And particularly if it's people that are manipulative or if they are aggressive, those folks don't go away. They keep staying there. And they keep staying in your life and occupying a space in your life because we all only have so much bandwidth of people and time that we can, you know, deal with, tolerate, or, you know, hang out with, whatever it is, that then wouldn't you rather have that space for somebody who respects your boundaries, who respects your views, who encourages you for growth, as opposed to somebody who takes away from that and makes you feel unstable, uneasy, and really caught up in fear as to what that person might say or do. 
And that takes us to the next one, which is assertive communication. Using the assertive communication. The assertive communication is based in I statements. And that is like, I feel such and such, such and such when you experience such and such. And it's being really clear in expressing your thoughts, feelings, and concerns in a very direct and clear manner. For many people, they're not used to doing this, so they don't. And they fall into what? That passive stance. That passive stance really, again, leaves a lot of space for manipulative behavior. But if you're assertive and you talk about how a particular behavior made you feel or that how it made you look, that hopefully that person will listen. If they don't, well, maybe it's time that they're out of your interpersonal space, right? That they're out of your relationship space, that they're out of your life to varying degrees. For example, if we go back to that office example, which every time that you say something like in a meeting, that other person makes a joke out of it, right? Which you feel makes you look unprofessional or foolish. You could go up to that person and say, I feel like when you speak up and you mention or you kind of tease me a little bit about what I'm saying, it really puts me in a negative light. I'd like to ask you not to do that. Now, the typical response to that is going to be, man, can't you take a joke, stuff like that, da 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 Now, that is a very poor rationalization and excuse for me manipulating you and making you feel bad. So what I often say is, if somebody is going to say to me, oh, man, can't you take a joke? I can take a joke. I just don't think that that's very funny, and I'm asking you not to do it. Um, and then you may have to get assertive and take it a step up and be more assertive and say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to ask you not, not to do that. And if they want to say, man, Dan can't take a joke, yeah, that's fine. I'm okay with, with you saying that because you can't keep disrespecting me in the office or in any type of environment because that negatively affects how you feel in that space, and how you can operate and function in that space. So it's important. We're really clear and assertive. Don't resort to being aggressive. Don't resort to being passive aggressive or passive. Don't do those things. Be assertive and be direct. Because what happens is that when you embrace assertiveness, we go to our next component, which is building self-esteem. you got to build your self-esteem. And what happens, I think, is a lot of, of individuals that... They don't work on their self-esteem and they're willing to take hits to their self-esteem so other people are okay. Yeah, I, I got to ask you to stop doing that. I'm going to have to because what happens is all of those little hits, right, that you tolerate people saying things or making jokes of you or not respecting your time or not respecting, you know, your speech or your space or whatever it is. What that does is it takes a little more self-esteem. Now, that's different than someone being late, saying, oh, I'm sorry, I'm late, or somebody saying something, making a misstatement, and then they apologize for it when you bring it up to them, or maybe they say, oh, you know what, I, I shouldn't have said that. That was my mistake. That's different. What I'm talking about is people who do things that are manipulative and make you feel less than, give you a sense of brokenness, and they almost feed on it. They are empowered by it, and that is exactly what we don't want to do because that takes from your self-esteem. And for your self-esteem, we want to cultivate your self-worth. You deserve to be treated better. We want to build your confidence that you are going to present yourself with a sense of poise, with that confidence, right? Shoulders back, head up. You know, I had a professor one time we were walking around. Uh, I went to Florida State, right? We're walking around Florida State. I'll never forget. <laughs> and this guy was great. And he said, are you looking for change? And I was like, huh? You know, and he said, well, I don't understand why, why you're looking down. And I was like, I don't know. I guess I never thought about it. He goes, yeah, put your head up. Put your head up and shoulders back. And I was so embarrassed, but I was like, you know what? He's right. I, and I wasn't looking for change, just in case you weren't. But, right, it's like, yeah, shoulders back, head up. That's how we should be walking. That's how we should really present ourselves with confidence. And it's interesting how the world will respond to you with a sense of confidence. Not snotty. Snotty is, you know, like that. Like you're snooty, you know. You're snooty. That's not snooty. Snooty is different. What we're talking about is confidence. Being confident. And you've got to respect yourself by treating yourself in a healthy and very encouraging way. Which is, don't rag on yourself. Don't make yourself feel bad. 
resist that urge for self-talk, for making yourself feel small, because what happens is that manipulative behavior can be internalized, which then drives your self-esteem lower, which increases the probability that you are going to accept it more easily. Don't accept it. Resist it. You deserve better. Build that self-esteem. Stay in touch and be aware of reality. And this is our next component, is that you have to question and validate what's going on in your life. Manipulative individuals make you question that, right? We talked about gaslighting. And what happens is, is they encourage you, again, to distort your perception. And it can be a perception of what you hear, what you see, whatever it may be, how you're taking in information. But remember that you have to validate a lot of your experience. And in those cases, you can use trusted and safe others. So with my clients, if they don't have like healthy people kind of in their environment, we talk about having healthy and safe others. Who are your healthy and safe others? Because these are people that you can use for validation and sounding boards. And that can help you really clear degrees of distortion and see the world in an accurate way. You may not want to see it that way, and I know that that's tough, but it's important to do it. It is important to see your life in a clear manner, in a more precise manner, so that you can address it, deal with it, manage it effectively. You can absolutely do it. And part of that goes into being able to say no, which is our next component. A lot of people have issue with saying no. They feel like, well, if I say no, then that person's gonna cast me out of their life. So, and we all know the reality, which is if somebody is gonna tell you no for something that is good for you, maybe they shouldn't be in your life. Maybe you need to question their role in your life. Now that may be hard to hear and I understand that, but it is important to examine that and think about it. Because saying no is again, it's asserting your boundaries, what you'll tolerate and what you won't. And even if you say no initially, you're getting used to saying no, you're getting used to asserting your boundaries, you're gonna feel a sense of guilt. You're gonna feel this sense of obligation to justify your decision. I always think it's okay to explain why I'm saying no, whether it's my clients or my kids or my friends or people in my life, whatever it is. I have no problem with explaining, oh, you know, I can't do that because da 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 da. And I think, you know, it's okay to give a rationale. Like I'm just gonna say no. You know, oh, can you help me move? No. I mean, that's kind of rude. But I think that it's okay to say that. Now, if after I explain why I can't, then you're going to give me a hard time about it, I'm going to probably, you know, I'll have a little debate. I don't mind a good debate. But if no means no, no is going to stay no. Because the reasons I give are usually, they're pretty valid. And as I see them, um, quite correct as to why I can't do something. And you have to embrace that as well. goes back to what? validity and reality of the life you're living, self-esteem, having that confidence, using those I statements, using all of these. These are not mutually exclusive. We are building these things together. It's putting Legos together, right? You're building this nice big Lego thing and you got to keep on clicking those Legos. Okay, one on top of the other. So important. Next component I want to talk about is avoiding reactivity. And which is if you know someone is manipulating you or if you know that somebody is using these manipulative tactics, what I want you to do is I don't want you to fly off the handle. I want you to be assertive. Don't be aggressive. Don't be passive aggressive. I want you to slow down, take a step back and approach the situation with a clear head. Now, sometimes that can be tough, particularly if you've been activated, triggered in a relationship, particularly a romantic relationship, right? Your partner says something, does something, or if you're a stuffer. You stuff it, stuff it, stuff it, stuff it, stuff it, stuff it, and then you just explode. Don't do that. Catch things when they're small. The more you shove things into a tiny little container, the greater the likelihood that it's going to explode. You can only put so much cotton, for example, right? And that's soft. And he's like, oh, well, it's not going to explode. It's not going to explode. What's going to happen is you're going to shove all of this cotton. Eventually, you're going to reach a point where you're putting all this cotton in this jar and no more cotton is going, to fill, is, is going to fill. So then what happens is you can cap it off, but then really that jar doesn't really have any use because it's so tight and it's so congested in there. But if you take the top off, it all just kind of what? It kind of foams out. Could be like a cotton explosion kind of thing, right? You get what I mean. And so we want to avoid reactivity. You are 
to stay poised, stay confident, stay in control. The most admired people on the planet are not those who lose their mind. That makes for an interesting movie, for sure it does. But it's the ones who keep cold, calm, and collected. Stay confident, stay poised. Don't lose it and avoid overreacting to various situations. I hope that these talking points are helpful and because it's so important to gain these insights and utilize them in your life in order to avoid and manage that manipulation. The more you use these strategies, the less likely you will be subjected to manipulative attempts. You, ha you have to, you have to use them and use them every day with everybody you know. Because then what happens is over time, Manipulators are like, well, I'm not going to mess with Dan because that's really, that guy, she's not going to fall for it. It's just a headache. So they go on to somebody else. And I don't want them to go on to you. I want them to skip you. So when dealing with relationships, I'm going to put a video right here that can help you better deal with relationships. So check it out. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.